Welcome to Real Estate in Real Time. I'm your host, Woody Zimmerman, here with Mark Skabowski of Remax Lakes. Welcome to the show. Here we are. Good morning. Good morning. And you brought up a, a very good uh, topic that we're going to talk about here today. Are you going to sing it? Uh, we... <laughs> no, I'm not come on, it come on. Should we rent or should we buy now? <laughs> the, the Clash. clash. Rock on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the clash. I, I love the clash. Renting versus buying. Renting versus buying. Big decision, right? Yeah, well, because I, you know the market is changing, and yeah. so you know a lot of people are are probably asking themselves right now: Should I, should I stay renting? Should yeah. I buy? What should I do? Well, and you know it's a personal decision. Mm -hmm. You know, for everybody. I mean, of course, the the American dream of home ownership. You know, and I, I'm not saying that jokingly, it really is for a lot of folks, because owning your home is probably the single largest investment that you will ever make. Yeah. So it's a huge decision. And, you know, all of us are going to approach that decision differently. Yeah. You know, off air, we were talking, I'm the analytical, right? Yes, you are. So yeah, for sure. I'm going to put it on paper and crunch the numbers. And mm -hmm. does this make sense? You know, here's what I'm spending whether it's a, a formal budget or whatever those things are, but I'm gonna calculate, 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 yeah. and then, okay, that's gonna help drive my decision. There are those that make the emotional, oh, I just wanna buy a house, mm -hmm. right? Whether you're ready for it or not, I just wanna buy a house. I'm sick of renting, you know, I'm sick of all the things that go along with renting. So what are some of those things? I mean, there are positives and negatives to renting. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the positives. Okay. You don't have to do any maintenance. That's right. Right? I mean, something breaks, you call your landlord. Yeah. Right? In general. I'm not talking light bulbs because, I, I mean, I I don't know. Right. You know, I, I, I haven't had a landlord in so long. I don't know what they do. I am a landlord. I don't change light bulbs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, so. You know, I'll send a plumber to, like, you know, fix a toilet right. or whatever, right. but I don't sure. change light bulbs. Sure. <laughs> so, you know, as a, as a renter, you don't have to worry about the maintenance. Now, I know that some folks that rent houses... Uh, you may have in your contract that you've got to take care of the yard work. Mm -hmm. So the difference between renting and owning isn't going to be any any different for you if that's what your lease says. And notice I said your lease because those lease terms expire, right? Yeah. I mean, you sign a lease for a specific amount for a specific amount of time. So at the end of that lease term, what happens to your rates? Like, Many times they increase. Yeah, and right, they have been going up here lately. So you know, a positive for a renter is you don't have to do any maintenance in general. Mm -hmm. um, if something breaks, you know, you don't worry about the property when you go on vacation, whatever. I mean, the house or the apartment or the condo or whatever. You you're not responsible for any of that maintenance. No. Nope. Where if you own a home, you're responsible for all of those. Things. Oh yeah. But we'll, we'll talk about the benefits <laughs> on, the, on the home ownership down the road, but. The, the negative for renting is you have no control over how much it's going to cost you to live there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know when my daughter was at uh, Purdue in school, you know, she was a pharmacy major. She We lucked out and she was in the same apartment for five years. And by God, they didn't raise our rent wow. for five years. Now, that's unusual. That is. That was a different time. Yeah. <laughs> because nowadays, at the end of the term, I think we're seeing rents go up. So rents have continually increased. Mm -hmm. over the last few years. Just as housing prices have increased, mm -hmm. rents have increased. So if you're thinking about, should I rent or should I buy, you know, what goes on there? What For you, can you afford if your rents increase mm -hmm. long term? I guess the other thing to that is, if you're renting, you never gain any equity. You never, it's almost like throwing your money away. And again, here I am right. a homeowner, right? And And it's my business selling homes. But when you rent, you, you, there's no return on that money. Now, your right. return may be your enjoyment of the fact that, hey, you can live, you can do what you want to do, you can go, you're not tied, you're not committed to a specific location for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. I signed a one-year lease, I'm going to be here one year, and then I can do whatever I want to do. And that's your return on investment. But again, number cruncher, yeah, analytical, okay, I'm spending $1,000 a month for rent. At the end of the year, what do I get back out of it? Nothing. I've right. experienced it already, mm -hmm. right? I lived in that place yeah. for a year. Yeah. That was my, that's what I got as far as a return goes. So, you know, again, in your decision, rent versus buy, that's gotta, gotta come into play. Is mm -hmm. your decision short-term? 
Is it long term? Like you said, your daughter at mm -hmm. Purdue. I mean, right. she knew her her time was short term. Right. right. So she's just going to stay down there for the five years. For the five years and, and go, and that's it. Doesn't make sense to buy down there. Right. But if you're if you're you know in a career or something like that, you sure. stay somewhere long term. Yeah. Then why yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. Why would? Because you? the return on investment that that's the big piece in that rent versus buy mm -hmm. is that when you do own, you can improve. And you can reap the benefits of those improvements over the long haul. And the last few years have really said that and shown that. Right. You know, if you'd have bought something back in 2015, and now you were selling seven years later, which in general is what the average American moves. That's what NAR, the National Association of Realtors, says. On average, families move every seven years. Yeah. If you had moved in that seven-year period, the financial benefits to you over over that seven year period would have been significant if you'd have sold it. If we could go back to twenty fifteen, I think I'd buy every piece of property I could get my hands on. <laughs> I think so. And then I'd be selling them I think right so. now. So all right, we're gonna talk more about this, the difference between buying versus renting. Which should you do? And I mean the choice really is up yeah. to you at the at the end of the day, but uh, we're talking about the benefits of both. We're gonna be back right after this. You're listening to Real Estate in Real Time. Welcome back. You're listening to Real Estate in Real Time. I'm your host, Woody Zimmerman, here with Mark Skabowski of REMAX Lakes. And we're talking about renting versus buying, and there are perks for each of them. There are. You know, and again, with, with renting, the fact that I can leave the house, I can, you know, when the contract's up, I can pick up and go. Definitely more flexibility when it mm -hmm. comes to renting. Um no maintenance, that would be an option, you know, and I think about that when I'm out raking leaves in the fall, boy, I really wish I was renting. Yeah. No, right? Right. When, I, when I'm doing big maintenance projects yeah. around the house, because the fact is, when you own, you're responsible to take care of the house, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some expenses that come along with home ownership. Yeah, there right? are. There definitely are. I mean, there's, there's built in, you know, you need to get the furnaces serviced or the furnace service, you know, stuff breaks, you fix. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do it yourself, you got to pay to get it done. Yeah. So where when you're renting, something breaks, you call the landlord. Now, you may have to wait to get it done, but hopefully you've got a good landlord and they're going to be take responsive. Care of stuff. Yeah. They're going to be responsive and take care of yourself. And, well, the other thing with the value of homes going up here over the past couple <laughs> right. of years that they have, you got property taxes. Yeah. Those increase as well. Th those have definitely increased. So, you know, again, and everybody's going to approach this from a different avenue a different feel different thought process but you know long term it is a personal decision and if you're thinking about buying <clears throat> you need to be ready to buy and you know if i've heard it once i've heard it a hundred times where i pay a thousand dollars a month rent i can afford a thousand dollar a month house payment well not necessarily the banks don't see it that way mm -hmm. so what you know what i would recommend is Sit down, put a budget together that shows what you have, what you spend every month. And, you know, again, I'm not a big, hey, put a three-year, five-year, ten-year plan together, although you probably should. But I was never that disciplined, you know, when I, before I bought my first house, I was not that disciplined. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, I was just going with the flow. Right. But sit down and keep track of what you actually spend. This is an easy way to come up with a budget. What do I actually spend every month? Record everything that you do. And if you're using a debit card, it's really easy because you see all the withdrawals out of your checking account, right? right? You sure do. This is the old guy who, you know, we used to have cash. Of course, you got the, the other models, which are put everything in an envelope, right? Put your spending money in it. You've got to entertainment of this, that, and the other thing. Right, right. But the fact is, keep track of what you're spending for a couple of months, and that'll really tell you where your money's going. Well, it's an eye-opener. I mean, you should do that. I, I, whether you're buying or not, right, I right. think you should do that because it's truly an eye-opener on how much money that's going out the door. It, it is, and, and ultimately, why are we talking about budgeting and expenses and stuff when we're doing a show on rent versus buy? Yeah. Well, because if you're gonna make a long-term commitment to yeah. a purchase, you wanna make sure you can you can afford, afford it, that man. before you get to there. Yeah. That's the purpose of having that discussion. And, you know, along the way, something that folks a lot of times don't even, you know, there's still a perception that you have to have 20% down when you're making that decision. So some people make the, I have to stay renting because I don't have 20% down to buy a house. Mm -hmm. That is a fallacy. You don't need 20% down payment to purchase. 
Now, is it better for you? Yes, it is, because you don't pay PMI yeah. if you do conventional financing with 20% down. But it does not mean that there aren't other options for you if you are buying. So don't use that as an excuse or a reason if you are renting or you're staying renting and not buying because you don't have 20% to put down. Yeah, because that's a really, really big deal because that's what I thought, Yes. you know, before I bought my first house. Yeah. And I mean, 20% down, I mean, I only spent 82,000. Yeah. That's still a lot of money. It's still a lot of money. It, it is, is. Yeah. a big chunk. Yeah. You know, and it's not just the down payment you got. Closing costs, you've got everything else that goes into right. that. Right, yeah. So what I'm saying is there are programs out there that you can purchase with less than 20% down. So if when you sit down and you do that, I, here's what I, you know, here's what I'm spending, here's what I make, here's what I think I can afford, you know, reach out to a lender and talk to a lender and get the reality of the situation. There may be a program that fits for you. If you're a veteran, you can do VA financing. Mm -hmm. If uh, there's FHA financing, which is three and a half percent down, there are all different ranges. Every lender's got a different program as far as down payment. Um, that's required in order to finance. So don't assume that you have to have 20% down. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, if you think you're in, you're in a rental and it's time and you're thinking, Hey, it, it's right for my family and I to buy. How do I make that happen? Talk to a lender, a local lender about, you know, making a purchase and they'll tell you very quickly. It's not around a water cooler. It's not because my friend got this, that, or the other thing. Every one of you are specific and unique. Mm -hmm. In every one of your situations are unique. You need to reach out and talk to the experts. And in this case, that would be a local lender. Yeah, and, and I want to emphasize local yeah. because they get to know you. Yes. They get to know you. They get to know your situation. And they're going to find the right plan for you. They are, and I guess the other thing is you can walk into their office yeah. or pick up the phone and talk to the same person yeah, that's rather than getting transferred from a call center in California to Missouri to New York, you know, depending on what time that you call. Mm -hmm. It makes a big difference. In fact, I've got a transaction going right now that I'm dealing with one of the big banks that is just, it's been a nightmare. I've done that before and it's yeah, not fun. It, it is not fun. I mean, the buyer brought their lender in with them and I'm, I'm now, we're at a stage where my recommendation is let's switch local. Mm -hmm. And I've had some pretty good discussions with local lenders. Can you do this? Can you do it quickly? Yeah, just like real estate is local, yeah. the idea of doing this is, yeah. is, is local as well. Absolutely. All right, uh, great information. Uh, now your contact information. Sure, websites, lakes-realtors.com, phone numbers 574-834-1233. Uh, I'll put this up on YouTube. Um, check it out. We've got a boatload of history of uh, YouTube videos out yeah, there. Absolutely. If you have a question for Mark, make sure you reach out for sure. You've been listening to Real Estate in Real Time. Have yourself a wonderful weekend.